Hello and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me today for another unique property home tour. I've just driven through some of Kent's most uh, scenic countryside and pulled up at this lovely old cottage in the picturesque village of Addisham with very uh, darling buds of Mayfield about it, um, this whole area. If you're British and you're of a certain age, you'll understand what I'm getting at here. If you're not, uh, this is a reference to a very popular TV period drama series from the 1980s, uh, but it was set in 1940s Kent. So normally before I film the properties we list, I've had the benefit of visiting them at least twice. But today is the first time I've seen this house as my colleague David, who looks after the Kent region for Unique, has been dealing with it so far. So you're going to get my first impressions as we have a walk around. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. It's a full walkabout tour so I can explore as much of the original detail with you as I can. And what we're touring is a historic home. It was built in 1600, which makes it late Tudor, and it's one of the most faithful restorations of a Grade II listed house I've seen in years. Um, I'd imagine this is going to be around about 15 minutes or so to watch, so budget around that sort of time for the video. What I can tell you before we start is this. We have five bedrooms, three receptions, two bathrooms, a boot room and a utility room, all on two levels covering 1,942 square feet, which is around 180 square meters. The asking price is coming in at 750,000 pounds and I'll leave a link below in the description box so you can have a look at that. And lastly, the other thing I can confirm with absolute certainty is this. I've only been here half an hour and I am completely smitten with this place. It's also helped that the weather's been reasonably kind to us this morning, so it's looking pretty good. Right, so that's out of the way. Let's get on, head outside and start the tour from there. Let's go then, let's kick off. We are outside the front of the house and this is uh, the village green and this used to be a pond and it's where Ponds Cottage got its name from. Uh, this was East Kent's largest natural freshwater pond until it was filled in in the 60s. Um, I don't know why, please don't ask me, but uh, apparently it was. Uh, there we are, and the drive. Now, this is a decent sized drive, really lovely, graveled, uh, nice uh, nice uh, setting as you walk in, and you can get, I would say, three nice sized cars into this drive, and I'm just gonna make my way onto the grass because it's gonna be a bit noisy if I crunch around on that gravel. And here we go, here's Pond's Cottage and the grounds. Really lovely garden. The whole thing was re-landscaped in 2020 by the current owners who've done a fabulous job. So starting just to my left here, we've got this uh, Canadian shingle roof above a Cumbrian oak frame pergola. Really nice there. And then there is Pond Cottage, built in 1600. And as you would like to hope, <laughs> from a chocolate box country cottage you've got a garden that fits the bill as well everything has been laid with real thought and care and as you would hopefully like to see lots of lavender just seems to work well in a country garden so here we are Ponds Cottage originally two houses two cottages knocked into one I'm not entirely sure when the houses were made a single residence but as you can see there the two original front doors still in place it's grade two listed uh, the all the pointing has been t has also well, I should say the house has been repointed with co uh, conservation grade lime mortar all in keeping with the listing status and I'll just give you another perspective here of the, the grounds, the gardens. We're surrounded by a lovely yew fence, which uh, you just see above that planting there. And if I just spin around very quickly, just above the tree line there, that is the rooftop of the 12th century Norman church, which sits behind the cottage and built apparently on uh, a, a priory that dates back to, or the original site of a priory that dates back to 616. Very fitting for East Kent. Now, that wisteria in the middle is a beautiful addition, which in the, uh, in, when it's in full bloom, looks the part. The house itself is built on chalk. So for a house of this age, it's remarkably solid and um, not, not a huge amount has had been you know, done to it over the years structurally. Apart from this corner over here, which is nothing to do with subsidence or natural 
um, anything naturally occurring. This, as you can see over there, is the change, or there's different brickwork, and that is the direct result of a tank. During uh, the Normandy landings in 1944, tanks were heading this way, they, they got lost basically, and one of them clipped the side of the house, so that had to be rebuilt. It's all in the deeds, it's all been uh, noted as part of the history of, of Pond's Cottage. Okay, let's head inside. Just to my front, or just to the front of me here, we've got a nice planted small orchard with cooking apples, and there's a bit of wilding over there behind that fence, and as hopefully you can hear, about the noisiest thing you can hear at the moment is just the wind rustling through the trees. Okay, more gravel. The, uh, the roof, this roof here is, I think is Welsh slate and the rest of the house is Kent peg tiles. So again, lots of thoughts gone into preserving as much of the original character as possible. And we're gonna head through the back door into the house. That's a key box on there. The house is currently a very successful um, holiday let. Very popular with families because of the size. Straight into the, I'm going to call it the boot room. Let me shut the door quietly. Yes, I'm going to call this the boot room, but uh, a very usable uh, space, which, you know, for a country house, it's perfect. You've got the dog, you've got wellies, dirty boots, whatever, you come in straight in, you've got lots of storage, and um, got the butler sink there to wash things off, maybe a dog, a <laughs> small one. And the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice perhaps the William Morris curtain and fabric there that covers this window and this lovely stable door. And next to this we have the utility room. And you've got a full-size washing machine tumble dryer, space for the ironing board, space for the um, hoover. And then directly here to my right we have the sitting room. Now this is where things get interesting. The house is uh, as I mentioned, is two knocked into one. So the arrangement, the floor plan's quite a, an unusual uh, layout, an interesting, unique layout, and it works, it just, it flows. But there's a couple of things to mention before we get started. Just remember that white door, that panel door there, and uh, all will come, will be revealed when, uh, when we finish, or we come to the, the end of the tour. But for now, this is the sitting room, and there is a beautiful, restored inglenook fireplace there the the uh, the beam above it is yew tree and there is a 17th century panel there sat behind the wood burner and that's a, there's a lovely very faint scent of old log burner in here which just fits the room uh, it's really cozy i mean the house the garden's a summer garden but the house to me is uh, is a cozy winter home and uh, just imagine that thing going on full blast curtains closed um, windy and rain outside it's just it's it's feels it just feels magical the flooring in here is oak it's re this is replacement it's not original and uh, this the beam in the middle of the room is oak that is original and some of the timbers that we see as we're walking around are original I'll point them out and just behind that uh, curtain there is one of the front doors that we saw from the outside right I am going to try to keep myself contained because when I'm walking around places that really get me excited I tend to go off on a bit of a word salad so I'm going to try and keep my comments as uh, as sensible and on point on point as I can that's the hallway as we walk into the hallway we've got to the right this gorgeous little door that leads back into the utility room and then to my left this is where we'll start more oak flooring as you'll notice, the colour schemes are very much uh, researched and reflective of the period of the house. So as you walk around, you'll see where the owners have just gone to every extent to try to um, keep it as authentic and original as possible. So we're on, we are now sorry, in the music room. That is a, and that in the fireplace there is a French 19th century enamelled stove. And then to the left, little door in the corner into a very nice, very well appointed, very nice, uh, very big shower room. A tiled floor there, and that window is the, uh, the just overlooks the back entrance. And just across the music room, the courtyard, which I'll just unlock. Sorry. There we go, unlock the courtyard door. Nice little sun trap. 
brick paved terrace area, lavender, and there's a little gate there which opens out into the street. All right, head back in. Right, then, this room is fabulous, very atmospheric. I love, this is one of my favorite rooms, I have to say. The authentic nature of this just is, it just, it screams historic. Um, this is a dining room. Behind that curtain is the other front door to the, to the front garden. And we've got down here, we've got these herringbone brick floor, herringbone brick, bricked floor. And window there, original timbers here in the floor, sorry, in the, uh, the wall and the ceiling, which is oak. Right, that door opens neatly into the kitchen, which is another gorgeous room. These, are, these floor tiles are reclaimed from a barn from the Chateau of Chambord, or the estate of the Chateau of Chambord. And more original uh, woodwork in here everywhere. You've got that oak beam across the other ingle nook where the, the, the cooker is. Nice sociable room. Now, one thing I would say that we get comments on a lot when we're dealing with unique historic homes is the ceiling heights. People are a bit worried about the ceiling heights in rooms. They are really good in this house. E exceptional, I would say, for a house of this period. And the, I, just to give you, just to demonstrate, this room probably got the ceiling that I would say is the lowest, but even at this height, it's still, it's not sort of thing you're gonna have to keep ducking your head around. So just to, just to demonstrate, I'm gonna flip the camera around. This central oak beam in the middle here is uh, I would say the lowest point in this room. And I am, there we go, I'm 5'11", and I'm, there's probably a good two, three inches above my head here. So that hopefully gives you some indication of the of the uh, the room heights, which are exceptional. And because the house has been refurbished with very much a uh, sort of a, a, almost like a shell and core start, everything has been added to make sure it fully match or fully scrubs up to modern day usage. So we've got this nice new kitchen, big six ring, uh, oh, sorry five ring gas burner there big double oven, even, even down to things like this, the water pressure, really, hopefully that gives you some idea, but uh, the, even the water pressure, everything is just, has been, it's as new and very well thought through. Two more windows overlooking the garden, and then we're gonna head upstairs, up a very steep staircase, typical of this, uh, typically of this um, age building. Now, we are in what would be, I think, cottage number one, because it's the original addresses were one and two, the street. So this staircase heads up to, uh, lose my balance here, uh, a bedroom, a uh, nice size double bedroom, and dormer windows with rear and front facing views, and more oak flooring up here, Lots of exposed and original timber work. Feature fireplace. And then through this door, we're into another bedroom. Now, don't worry, you don't have to walk through this bedroom to get to that bedroom. It all, all will become clear when we get back downstairs to the point which I flagged up before we started the tour. So another double bedroom, more oak flooring. Dormer windows again, front facing and more of that original exposed timber work in the wall, oak timbers. Back to the hallway window overlooking the side to my left, and then there's the hall. And then left here, got this another nice size bathroom. All the colours, I think, are really nice. They just work. And this bath is, I believe it may have been French, but I know it's, 90, it was, it's uh, a 1926 roll-top bath that they've had recently re -enameled. It looks the piece, it really looks, the, it really fits well in here. So it's a beautiful thing. And then uh, matched up sanitary wear. 
Okay, we have just to my left another little door which opens into another bedroom. Now this has got a single bed in it but I would say that it would easily accommodate a, a standard size double and then that window overlooks the, uh, the side of the house where we came in. Now hallway, two steps across and another bedroom. More oak flooring, more dormer windows, uh, so a dormer to front and a skylight to the rear and then more original features. And if I just spin round, another really cute little wooden door that takes us through to another bedroom with bunks in it. And again, more oak flooring, windows to front and to rear and more original oak timbers in the walls. We get another view of that door, which is really nice. Okay, now, just to the left of this really big, solid old uh, chimney breast here, that runs through the, the spine of the house, the middle of the house, we have this an, uh, another stairwell. So this would have obviously been the other staircase in cottage number two. And here, this very neatly drops us down into the sitting room. So if I just pull my way forward here and spin around, there is, was, I should say, our starting point. So this is the room we started in, the sitting room, with its lovely look. And that was the door I mentioned to take into consideration. So there we go. That is the tour of Ponds Cottage, the uh, grade two, 1600 built, late Tudor family home. Okay, so historic is the flavour of today's property tour and if they were dairy products, this home would be the full fat version. I hope you agree. Um, now, whilst this location is very, very villagey and seemingly isolated, it's not. It's got some excellent transport links. We are around five miles to the centre of Canterbury, which is a 20 minute drive traffic depending. And this is one of the few local villages with its own railway station. And that's a big deal. You really don't feel like you're cut off from civilization here. There are direct services to London, Victoria, which is around about an hour and 40 minutes. That's a stopping service. You can also get to St Pancras in the same time, but that means changing at Canterbury Station and heading into town. But let's be honest, this is the sort of place that will appeal to anyone looking for an escape from the city uh, to the country to start a new chapter or a weekend retreat or a holiday let investment. And I honestly couldn't think of a nicer place to be. So that's it for today. Thank you for joining me again on today's uh, walkthrough. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please leave a like and a comment if you did. That would be much appreciated. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts on the place as always. If you'd like to view the house, you can do that in the normal way through the website. That's uniquepropertycompany.co.uk or you can email us info at uniquepropertycompany.co.uk and we'll take care of the booking time. I'll leave links to everything you need to know about the house and the local area in the description below. So that's me done. I'm off on holiday for a week now, so you won't see me until the week after the next. Uh, so until then, thanks again and look after yourself.